record of 2-1 to take on the Kansas City Chiefs, who come in surprisingly unbeaten at 3-0. and Perfect day for football in Cleveland. Temperature 58 degrees and should drop a little bit as the afternoon goes on. The wind is relatively light. Forecast for windy, cool weather. A dramatic homecoming for the expert commentator today. Bob Golick gave the best years of his life to the dog pound in the 80s when he helped the lead of Cleveland resurgence and got them to the AFC Championship game twice. Only scored his sole career touchdown several years back on that uh, pickoff of a Lynn Dickey fumble. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley along with the fabulous Bobby G, number 79, Bob Golick. And Bob, Kansas City Chiefs off to that 3-0 and start. A little bit surprising, but a big win over the Raiders last week. Right, a, a big win over the Raiders, but one of the things you have to deal with there is an emotional letdown. We talked to Neil Smith last night, and he really felt personally that emotionally he was drained. Took his players into a meeting and personally challenged them to all step up and make a, a big play on their own. Steve Bono succeeds Joe Montana and has been terrific so far. Right, he has been one of the big preseason questions for the Kansas City Chiefs in a lot of people's minds, but in the last couple of games he's brought them back to fourth quarter victories and right now he's playing, playing as well as I think Joe Montana would have at this point. Cleveland Brown coach Bill Belichick's critics call him a control freak. Well, he's more in control than ever now as he serves as defensive coordinator along with the head coach. And right, Jim, they're asking him to direct that defense. And last week against the Houston Oilers, it was safety blitz after safety blitz. But well, we'll see today if that Bill Belichick aggressive trend on defense continues. And like Steve Bono, Vinny Testaverde is playing terrific football for the Browns, leading the AFC in pass efficiency. Well, a lot of people are really expecting him to be the weak link in this offense. But he has come out, he's spreading the ball around to a lot of receivers, and actually he's probably playing the best football of his career right now. So the exciting autumn continues in Cleveland, the opening of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Indians having their best season in 41 years, and Marty Schottenheimer returns to the scenes of some of his greatest triumphs and his biggest frustrations. We mentioned Schottenheimer was the head coach who took the Browns twice to the conference championship game in the 80s, and Bob Golick, he's doing the same thing with the Chiefs that he did with the Browns, making them competitive year after year. The Browns have won the toss and elected to receive. Number 83, Michael Bates, and number 23, Ernest Hunter, way at the six-yard line. And ready to kick it away for the Chiefs will be Lynn Elliott. Customary sellout, or near sellout crowd on hand here in Municipal Stadium. As Elliott gets ready to put the foot to the football. Finally picks it up inside the 10 and takes advantage of the screen's rhythm of coverage to get it across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Testimony and company will start from there. Greg Minuski made the tackle for Kansas City. Cleveland offensive line. Tony Jones is the key man there. He has emerged in the last couple of years as one of the better offensive tackles in the league. Cleveland backs and receivers. You see that Leroy Horde is the key man in the running game. Andre Reiser off to an extremely slow thought when they go to four wide receivers. They bring the third man, the Cardinal, and the fourth man, Derek Alexander, onto the field. First down for the Browns. For the football at the 28-yard line. That's where officials rule the hunt was down. coverage guys do they have? Carter, Hasty, Collins moving to free safety, all among the best coverage players in the league. William White is the sixth defensive back. He's the man who's given up his starting free safety spot to Mark Collins. First down on the screen pass from Testaverde to Horde, so now the Browns operate from their 39. Jim, you are right, and you are right. They're determined to get the running game started. And what a way to start it. But on that play, the line of scrimmage just was bowed back into that Kansas City defensive line. The offensive line for the, the Browns just totally dominating up front in these first couple of plays. In the second down, two-yard line, Tony Jones. 
yards to go after the 8-yard run by Moore. He was ball at the 47-yard line. Lorenzo White, number 34, in the game for the moment, replacing Moore. Well, he came very close to being pulled down 
by Matt Sally Hoa in the middle, who has been doing an incredible job in this new attack defense. Number 12, 10-yard penalty, loss of down, it will be third down. Well, we're going to see Dan Sally move on the right side of your screen, beat the guard, and get a hold of uh, Vinny Tazzaverde, who breaks the hold. But as you, as you flush it out of the pocket, which is, uh, he's going to... It looked like it just slipped out of his hand, Jim. And I don't think he intentionally was going to drive it to the ground right there. It looked like he just kind of lost uh, lost the grip on the ball at that point. All right, so cancel my sack stat. He's still only been sacked four times. Uh, Call the intensity on me. So we can put the ball back to the 31 yard line, which would make for a long field goal try if it were to take place from there. And it's third down, 23. I say 31, the football's at the 36 yard line. Short of the chain, even if he made the catch. Oh, 
Eric Turner, who held out in the preseason for a new contract, certainly has caught up from what, from the time that he missed in the preseason. You can see him react up on the receiver here on the right side of the screen. Great timing on making a play on both the receiver and the ball. Any earlier, he's over the back and he's interference. Great reaction. He's running away for Kansas City. And you see the numbers on Aguiar, who's been hitting them deep so far this season. Keenan McCardle stands at his 20-yard line. McCardle will watch it fall inside the 30. Now he runs up and takes a bite and gets it across the 25 to around the 26-yard line again. Number 51, Greg Minuski, special team captain, down to make the stop. Marcus Allen leaving the field. Uh, the report we have is that he's got a laceration above uh, his eye. And I, I guess I know this man. He's going to go in, get stitched up, come back out again. Down nine. Ford in motion. And it's 
begins the spread. Estiverde gets away from number 75, Joe Phillips, and moves the ball out of bounds to avert the sack. Well, defensively, the Kansas City Chiefs, and we've seen this before, they've gone changed this year from their uh, basic reading 3 4 defense, over 100 defense, to an attack style defense. On the snap of the ball, all these guys are just hitting gaps. You see Joe Phillips being knocked off right up the middle, chasing Billy out of the pocket, but that's what they hope to get out of this attack style uh, defense. A quicker rush, get quicker into the face of the quarterback and also disrupt the running game. Long Booker, number 99, a second-year player out of Cincinnati, seeing action today as Aaron Mickle is sitting down. The Chiefs are in a bad angle. On second down, Chesterberry tosses in the flat, and it's Ernest Miner who gets close to the chain before number 50 was there to make the stop for the Chiefs. And that's Anthony Davis, reserve outside linebacker, who was there to make the stop for Kansas City. Doug Terry is down on the, on the uh, play. He looked like he was in, in position to make that play, and I think the, uh, the the linebacker coming in just, I think, made a hit on Doug Terry. So with no score in Cleveland, and still in the first period, 3.56 to go, we'll be back. Doug Terry right there, number 24, reacting to the draw play. We'll see him react back as Anthony Davis comes in to make a play and gets a hit right there on Doug Terry's knee. We'll have to uh, wait for a report to see uh, how extensive he's walking out of it, off of it, under his own power, so he must be uh, halfway decent. Terry, the fourth year defensive back out of Kansas, is the nickel back for Kansas City. If he can't go, then William White becomes the fifth defensive back, and Marty Schottenheim would have to make a decision on whether to use dime defenses. Ninth play of the drive for the Browns. They've achieved the first and ten now at the 34-yard line of Kansas City. This pass is caught by Michael Jackson with a little running room after the catch. Short of the first down, gain of about seven. James Hasty makes the stop. Let's check in with Chris Gumbel in New York. Jim, we'll take you to Cincinnati, the Oilers and the Bengals. Chris Chandler didn't play last week because of a bruised shoulder. Nothing wrong with it here. 58 yards to the rookie, Chris Sanders, with the extra point. Houston on top of the Cincinnati Bengals. It's a 7-0 score in the first quarter, Jim. Thank you, Greg. And, Bob, we saw Chris Sanders, two catches for 90 yards for the Oilers last week. He's going to be a surprise star, it looks, for the moment. Right, him and Joey Galloway in Seattle, a couple wide receivers. Oh, I say. Very disappointed that that play did not time up. 
They've been having problems with timing between him and Vinny. And I think that time it was more due, due to the fact that when he went to make his burst, he lost his foot. Minor into the football game on the second down. At the last minute, Walter Reeves comes off and Harold Bishop replaces the tight end. Perhaps with an instruction from the bench. Testaverde throws in the middle of the end zone in the crowd and no open receiver is there. Flags are down at the goal line. Bishop and Risen colliding in the end zone with defenders surrounding them. And they're high-fiving each other uh, as if they know something we don't know that perhaps one of them drew an uh, interference penalty. Holding number 50, service today as Greg Minuski is replacing George Jamison as outside linebacker and Davis gets some action. We just see him to the left to the left of screen right here grabbing on to the receiver slowing him down his progression downfield good call by the referees. To the five yard mark off takes it down to the six yard line where it will be first and goal. Leroy Horde back to the game and pull back to the round. without a rushing touchdown so far this year. Gain of three. Paul McDaniels, number 77, there along with William White, 35, to make the stop. Well, that's, they run right down the field with a mixture of run and pass, but Leroy Hort has been the guy who's just been pounding it away during the course of these last two drives. They feel probably at this point, hey, it's the best opportunity to get in right now is to give it to Leroy. Kansas City's had only one possession. It was three and out. Dominated really by the injury of Marcus Allen, which creates a question mark on their sideline right now. Second down goal from the three. All six Browns touchdowns this year in the air. Before that. Flags down as Hort gets across the goal line with what might be and will not be a Cleveland TD. Gerald Dixon made the stop. 
Classic with NBC tonight for the premiere of Must See TV, a brand new night of comedy. First at 7, 6 Central is Brotherly Love starring Joey Lawrence, followed by minor adjustments. Then at 8, 7 Central, it's the Sunday premiere of Mad About You. Big news, there may be a baby on the way. That's followed by the premiere of Hope and Gloria. It's a new night of Must See TV comedy, NBC tonight.